Hey. So, my cousin, my older cousin used to molest me. And sometimes it would be right in front of the whole family and they wouldn't know it. And neither did I. I didn't know what was going on. I was like seven or eight years old. And uh, he was like 18 or 19. And um, yeah. So let's get into it. I, um, I remember my dad asking my aunt, one of my aunts, um, and my grandmother, would they please watch the girls for him while he, you know, goes out? And they were like, no. I guess it was this big thing about, they're your children. You need to be home with them. We want to go out and, and have fun on our weekends too. Not sitting home with your kids. You don't want to have them. You need to take care of them type of thing. So these two cousins of mine from the other side of, of my family, my grandfather's sister's descendants lived like three doors down from us we lived in these big houses on um, falls road in baltimore right across the street from uh poly and western high schools and um they're gone now condos they they came in and, and built condos there but um we lived in these houses full of people my my grandmother and like five or six of her adult children or more. And then uh, her brother, my uncle James and me and my little sister and um, and my dad and the Epps, the Epps family, that's the other side of my family or one of the other sides of my family. Uh, they lived three doors down in a house just as big with just as many people living in that house. So two of my cousins from the Epps side are at our house on Falls Road while my dad is having this conversation, trying to get my aunt or my grandmother to keep us so he can go out. And they're like, no. And so my cousin, the older one, he's like, oh, I'll watch the girls for you, Billy. My dad's name, Billy. I'll watch the girls for you. And my dad quickly, you know, okay. And let some keep us. So I was routinely molested by this older cousin. And I believe he was grooming me to eventually rape me. But that didn't happen. The Holy Spirit stopped that. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, I'll tell you everything. My little sister, she was actually raped by his younger brother. He had a younger brother who was like 16 or 17. While my sister was like six or seven. And uh, he, would, he, he would rape my little sister. And uh, my father didn't did nothing about it uh, called her a liar said she was lying and uh trying to start stuff and um didn't defend her at all anyway okay so my cousin would do things like he would go to the store and he would come back with like chips or cookies or you know some candy or whatever like that and he would stand right in front of me and eat it and you know i'm a kid kids you know they see it they want it and so i would ask you know can i have a cookie or can i have a potato chip and he'd be like yeah but um you got to sit on my lap and so i didn't know that he was you know i didn't know what was going on I wasn't having any kind of sexual thoughts at that. You know, I was too young for any of that. So anyway, uh, so I would sit on his lap. And um, I remember one time he, um, he, he showed it to me. He, ex you know, he showed me his, his penis. I didn't know what I was looking at. I didn't, <laughs> it didn't mean nothing to me. I wanted... 
I wanted the potato chips or, you know, whatever the motivation, that, that's all I wanted. But I remember seeing it. I remember what it looked like. I remember the birthmark that he had on it. Yeah, I remember. So anyway, um, that would happen <clears throat> on a regular basis. And then we had a three foot swimming pool in our front yard. It was um, cement, it was like in the ground, but it only went to like three feet. And it was perfect, you know, for a house with um, kids and stuff. So we, we might, you know, be having a, a cookout or a picnic outside because we had picnic tables. It was a big, big yard, big yard, big house, a lot of people. And um, we would get into the pool and um, then here he would come. And he would call me over to him and say, hey, Brenda, you want to play a game? And I, I didn't know. So he would pretend... He would dunk me under the water and pretend that he was playing with me, dunking me under the water. But while he's dunking me under the water, his hands are all up under my bathing suit. And I didn't ever get any attention from my dad or my aunts or uncles. Like they didn't play with us, they didn't nurture us. Um, you know, we were always just a nuisance and a bother. Um, and so I had no clue what was appropriate play and what was inappropriate play. I hope that makes sense. Um, but anyway, I had no idea that what he was doing was inappropriate. Until one day, and I'm I'm just this is just God. One day, I'm we're watching cartoons, me and my little sister, and a public service announcement comes on TV, and it's just a simple picture of a little girl's bathing suit and a little boy's swim trunks, and it and it said. If anyone touches you anywhere that covers your bathing suit in places that that is covered by your bathing suit, this is wrong. And you should tell somebody, tell a teacher, tell a police officer, tell your parents, but tell somebody. When I saw that, the light went off in my mind that what my cousin had been doing to me was wrong. You know, my, my dad never sat me down and taught me, you don't ever let anybody touch you here or there or anything, you know. He didn't talk to me about sex until he saw that I was developing breasts and his whole talk was, um, don't, be paying it. Don't be letting no boys touch on you or kiss on you. You you be worried about your books. You do your schoolwork. Don't you be worried about no boys. That was his sex talk. He just, I mean, he was just. Anyway, um, so I realized that what my cousin was doing to me, had been doing to me was wrong. Um, and so I started staying away from him. Somehow, by the grace of God, uh, my dad had stopped asking, um, him and his brother to watch, um, me and my sister. Um, actually, I think it might've been because of my mother, because my little sister was getting raped. 
Sorry, that's my dog, Duchess. She's outside, hopefully. Hopefully you can't hear it too much. But um, my, my mom, uh, she told me how she had taken us to the doctors and the doctor said and had us checked down there. And the doctor said that um, my little sister had been touched, uh, had been violated. And when my mother took that information back to my father, I'm absolutely sure she was mad, hot as fish, gre fish grease. And I, I'm quite sure, and, and my my dad was so hurt and bitter you know, that he probably didn't want to hear anything that she had to say. And he was checked out as far as we were concerned. And, he, you know, he really didn't care. Um, And so my mother took it to my dad and was like, somebody has been touching the girls, you know, um, what's what's going on? Who who are you allowing around the girls? Um, I remember my mother telling me uh, that she confronted him about it and they just blew her off, acting like she was just mad because my dad had moved on and had a new girlfriend and like my dad, my mom was just trying to start trouble. But, you know, that's the same bullshit excuse that my dad used when my little sister told him that she had been raped by our cousin. You know, he was like, you're just trying to start trouble. You're making this up and this and that and the other. So, yeah, he was just... Um, he, he, he just didn't care. Um, so he blew my mom off and he blew my little sister off. And so that happened. So, um, both of our families, both sides of the family went on a vacation together and he was there so everybody decided one day we all gonna go to the pool well I remembered what he used to do to me in the family pool in front of the house in front of everybody and the thought of that potentially happening again I was no bueno I was not even trying to put myself in that situation so I was like about 11 at this time and my breast had started to develop and so when everybody was talking about going to the pool I was like oh no that's okay I don't want to go I'll just stay here so I stayed back and that joker Kid. And before I knew it, I was by myself with him. So I thought at this point, I thought I was alone and everybody's gone. So I'm relieved. Next thing you know, his creepy ass comes from behind the goddamn corner somewhere. And he's, hey, Brandy, his goofy ass. Dang, let me see your titties. You, you, you growing up, girl. You growing up, ain't you, girl? Let me, let me see your titties. Let me see. Let me see how you growing up. So now that I know, you know, what he's doing is wrong. What he's been doing to me is wrong. I screamed. I was like, no, you being nasty. Leave me alone. And I ran. I ran out of the house. Oh, I ran outside. And when I got outside, my older sister and my older cousin was standing outside. They were like 16 at the time or like 15 and 16. Um, you know, they was at that age, too cool for school age, you know. So I opened the door and I ran outside and they're the only people that I see. And I was like, hey, so-and-so is in there being nasty. He told me to lift up my shirt and show him my chest. 
my older sister said, girl, don't nobody want to see them bottle caps you got? You know, shut up. She just, she, she blew me off and her and my cousin laughed at me. That made me feel ashamed. That made me feel stupid. That made me feel like no one would care. So I never told anybody else in my family, not until I was much older, you know, and I, I, I realized that that was a wrong perspective. Um, you know, I was thinking with the mind of a child. So anyway, um, but guess what? He never tried to touch me again. That was God. That was God. He never tried to touch me again. I guess the thought of me telling petrified him to the point where he completely backed off of me. Now, did he stop molesting other children? I have no idea. I have no idea. I hope. I hope so. But I doubt it. Oh, actually, no. No, you know what? I talked to one of my cousins from his side of the family, and he tried to come and pick her children up, young children, um, trying to take them to the store. It just popped up out of the blue. Hey, why don't you send the kids out? Let me take them to go get some ice cream. <laughs> oh, ugly, goofy ass. Um... Yeah, so no, he didn't stop molesting kids. I'm pretty sure he did not stop molesting kids, but he stopped bothering me because um, he saw that um, I would tell and that terrified him. Yeah. So if you have children, if you have young children, let them know. If anybody tries to touch you anywhere where your bathing suit covers, that is wrong. Run. Pick up a brick or a rock and hit them with it. <laughs> Throw it if you got good aim, you know. But come tell mommy. Come tell daddy. Come, you know, scream. Let your kids know if somebody is around them in their vicinity doing something sexually inappropriate, like... Uh, I remember one time I was 12 years old and I was at the library doing my homework and a man, I, I, I was uh, doing my homework. So my head is down. I'm doing my homework and I hear this noise. I don't know what it is. Um, but after a while, I look over to the side in the direction of the noise there is a grown man standing in between the, you know, bookcases in the aisle with his member out doing that. And he, you know, did it my way so that I could see smiling all big. I didn't know what to do. Nobody had ever talked to me about anything like this. I did not know what to do. I got up quietly because we're in a library and I, you know, uh, I, so I think I'm, I, I was going to walk over to the information desk and tell on him. But the guy just hurried up and walked past me, straight past me, and, and he was out of there. What I should have done was scream. What I should have done was scream. A scream a lot of times will stop these nasty bastards. Yeah, teach your kids to scream. If somebody is doing something inappropriate around them, first thing, just scream. Get all eyes on you because that is what you need right now. You need all eyes on you. Scream, start hollering, say, ew, sad, whatever, scream. So anyway, um, 
Yeah. <sighs> I thank God that um, he didn't rape me. Um, it was definitely, you know, now I don't, I don't want to be around my family like ever. I never want to be around my family because, um, they don't care. I don't come from a loving family at all, at all. Um, they're very toxic. All of them. They, well, most of them, um, I, I do have one uncle that um, I fucks with him, you know, but um, the rest of them, even my dad, you know, now the way my dad used to tolerate me as a kid. Now that's how my relationship with, is with him. You know, it's like, eh, it is what it is. You know, I know he didn't love me when I was growing up. And, you know, now he's old and wishes we had a better relationship. But he he didn't, he wasn't interested in doing what it took to have a good relationship when it was time to do those things. And so now um, I just don't have those feelings. You know, I, I just, I don't, they're not there. So, it is what it is. Um, yeah, so if you guys enjoyed any of this content, if you want more, you know what you got to do. So, do that or don't. Um, I got to plug my book, Bedroom Secrets of an Ex-Lesbian. I used to be gay for a long time until God delivered me. That's a whole story. You can find that one on my um, page. But anyway, um, yeah, God delivered me from homosexuality. And I wanted to do something. I wanted to, like, what good could I take from that whole experience? Um, and one great thing that's great, big thing that stood out to me was how many women I met that chose to that lifestyle simply because they were tired of giving their all to a man for years and not get anything in return, nothing, no emotional fulfillment, no, um, no real respect or or um just being treated well in the relationship um financial hardships because like you know he might feel like because he 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 makes his money he should be able to do what he wants to with his money and sometimes bills wouldn't get paid or this or that or just you know a lot of instability and then ultimately when it would come down to the bedroom no satisfaction at all I met so many women that were with men for years and never had an orgasm um and you know that gets real old and there's a lot of women that They've gone through their whole lives and never had an orgasm, you know, uh, and they just don't worry about it. They tell themselves, oh, sex is not the main thing and we have real love and this and that. They tell themselves a whole lot of bullshit so that they can keep on living unsatisfied because at the bottom of it, they just really might be scared to live on their own or start over or, you know, whatever. Or maybe they, you know, figure that there's something wrong with them. And, you know, that's just what it is. Or or they just feel like, well, I'm just not a person that really enjoys sex. No, you just never had good sex. <laughs> You've been having sex. It just ain't been good. Just like any mechanic can work on your car. But he could be a shitty mechanic and your car never gets fixed. There's always something wrong with it. You know, just because he down there tinkering around don't mean he knows what he's doing, you know? 
Um, so it's a good book for um, anybody that you want to easily be able to give any woman multiple orgasms. That's what it's about. I give step-by-step -step instructions on the ABCs and the one, two, threes of some simple techniques that will make giving women orgasms very easy. And once you know that, it's just like once you learn the alphabet, what you do with it after that. If you just want to write simple sentences, okay. If you want to write sonnets, if you want to write uh, haikus, if you want to write uh, a thesis, you can do that because you have the tools now, right? You can take it wherever you want to. So uh, whatever, however you want, whatever kind of lover you want to be, find the tools in there. And women, if you've never had an orgasm, click the link to my book is in the description below get the book you listen to it and you learn your body so that you can help your man help you have orgasms and just satisfying intimacy everybody wants satisfying intimacy why you think all these people be watching porno what you trying to learn something different no you're not you're not satisfied you having sex but you're not satisfied learn how to satisfy your partner and have more satisfying sex you know um it's it is important if it wasn't important pornography and the sex industry and all that stuff it wouldn't they wouldn't make the billions and trillions of dollars that they do. It's a touchy subject that a lot of people are uncomfortable with. And therefore, a lot of meat needs continue to be unmet. You don't have to tell anybody you listen to my stories. You don't have to tell anybody you bought my book. You don't have to tell anybody what you learned. But... If it sounds like something that could be useful to you, get it. Ain't nobody watching you right now. <laughs> There's nothing to be embarrassed about. I can't see you. <laughs> so I hope that um, all these experiences of mine can help people to not go through a lot of the things that I've gone through protect your children from things that have happened to me heal your heart get therapy so that you don't become one of these checked out parents and if you are a checked out parent get help get help uh, I love mindvalley.com y'all listen to my stories and you know, you might think, my God, Brandy Lee, <laughs> your, your trauma is so compound. It's, it's, it's so much stuff. You know, how are you okay? Are you okay? Yeah, I am. I'm better than okay. I'm good, baby. I'm very, very happy. I love who I am. I love who I am. And I don't have a problem loving um i'm not a dummy anymore <laughs> i'm not naive anymore but that took work it took work i spent years in therapy group therapy a lot of different therapy um but one of the best therapeutic platforms i have found and i wish i wish that it was available to me years ago, but it's available now. And that's mindvalley.com. I took, uh, so far I've taken two journeys on Mind Valley. The first one is rapid transformational therapy uh, for the abundant life. It's by Marissa Pears and she is amazing. She, it's, hypnotherapy so it's subconscious work right 
So it deals with those triggers from trauma and things like that that have happened to you. They go away. It takes them away. Um, so she believes and teaches that you can have abundance in love. You can have abundant, loving relationships. You can have abundance in your health. You can have abundance in your finances. You can have all these things and you can have them all at the same time. You don't have to sacrifice your relationships with your family so that you can have wealth. You don't have to sacrifice wealth to be able to take care, take good care of your family and have those and nurture those loving relationships. You know, you can have it all, all at the same time. It's a wonderful, wonderful tool to heal your subconscious mind of those deep, deep traumatic wounds so that the rest of your life can be the best of your life. Uh, the second journey on Mind Rally that I took is called uh, the Silva Mind Control Technique. And that is to help me, it helps me, has helped me to get control of my emotions and get get control of my mind um, so that I'm not led around by my emotions and living um, it, reacting to everything that comes my way um, so that you can think clear, so that you can hear from God, so that you can clear your mind and your spirit and heal your body, heal your mind. Transformative stuff mindvalley.com this is not a plug they ain't paying me i wish they would <laughs> i wish they would give me a uh what you call that thing an affiliate link you know i wish they would maybe they will one day y'all pray for me they give me an affiliate link but it, whether i get paid for it or not the world will be better the more healthy healed people um, in the, that we have in the world that are kind and loving and nurturing and not so stiff and intolerant and hostile. Come on, that would just make the world a better place, you know? So even if they never give me an affiliate link, I'm always going to big up Mind Valley because it's just, you know, right there in your hand healing and i am here for it okay so this video is way too long i am trying oh, I, I need to make them like you know 10 minutes because <laughs> y'all are busy y'all got stuff to do you know listening to this crazy woman you don't even know you don't know me <laughs> No, but um, I appreciate you. And you stuck around to the end. Look at you. I love you too. <laughs> um, yeah, so I will see you in the next video, okay? All right. Take care.